I want to work a line integral example using work as the example function. So let's start out down here. We'll say that work is equal to the integral around some closed path of the force vector times the derivative of the path. Of course, the derivative of the, well, the derivative of the path. Let's just leave it at that for a moment. Now, force will be given to us as a vector. That vector will be x squared, y squared. And we recognize that as a vector field. I'll say a little bit more about that in a moment. And then the path will be given also as the segment, as the segment from 0, 0, call that point P, to the point 2, 4, call that point Q. Okay, so that's the path. Now, this particular vector field, what is that all about? Um, I'll show you a picture. Here I have plotted the vector field. These are the arrows. Notice that my axes go from 0 to 4 in y and 0 to 2 in x. That's so I can at least get the entire uh, path on here. The path goes from 0, 0 to 2, 4. And that's this line segment. That's what, that's what it was supposed to be. That's what it is. It's a plot of that line segment. The vector field impacts the path. It, it is a force that acts on the particle when the particle is somewhere along the path. And it acts differentially so that at 0, 0, there's hardly any, practice well, probably zero force. But if you were to go up to 0, 4, which we won't, of course, on this path, there would be quite a bit of force and it would be vertical. And if you went to the right on the path as, and stay close to 0, the force is horizontal. And as you go up the path, it's, it's changing all the time. Down here, it's nearly zero, nearly vertical. Up here, there's a, you know, longer arrows, more force, and it is sort of north-northeast, so that the force varies everywhere along the path. And that's what we have to account for. So let's talk a little bit more about the path. Let's suppose that we can write the vector equation for the line segment. We can write the vector equation for the line segment. That is going to be xy is equal to p plus some parameter. We're going to parameterize it uh, times q minus p as t goes from 0 to 1. Now let's, uh, let's look at that a lot more carefully. First off, q minus p. q minus p is going to be, well, q is 2, 4, and p is 0, 0. So you can see that q minus p is going to wind up being uh, 2, 4. So now I can write my path a little bit better. So that's going to be x, y is equal to, this time I'll write it out, 0, 0, plus t times, and it'll be 2, 4. 0 less than or equal to t, less than or equal to 1. Now, you can see pretty readily with this that if I were to take the derivative of it, that the derivative of the path would be equal to, and it's a derivative with respect to t, the, the differential of the path would be 2, 4. 2, 4. All right, and that then allows us to write FDS, F dot product DS. And FDS is going to be equal to, ah, now what is x squared, y squared? Well, x is going to be 2t, and y is going to be 4t, so that's going to be 2t squared, quantity squared, and 4t quantity squared. 
and that's going to be multiplied dot product really by 2 4 so let's see if we can do that without without carrying out everything 2t 2t quantity squared is 4t squared 4t squared times 2 is going to be 8t squared and then we've got to add 4t quantity squared is 16t squared 16t squared times 4 is going to be 64t squared so FDS is going to wind up being uh, 64 and 8 that is 72t squared now the only thing left to do is work is equal to the integral around the path of f ds f ds and that is going to be the integral from what to what well we're in t so from 0 to 1 because that's the that's our segment that's our path of 72 t squared that in turn is going to be from 0 to 1 72 over 3 t cubed which is going to be simply equal to 24 and if we've been in SI units for work then the answer is going to be joules alright that's all for the example of this line integral thank you